Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, divide array into arrays with a particular max difference. We are given an array of nums of size n and we wanna divide it into arrays where each of those arrays are gonna be of size three. Immediately, the first question you should ask, or at least the first question I personally asked is, is this n number gonna at least be greater than or equal to three? Because if not, then obviously we can't really do that. So I quickly scrolled down to the bottom of the problem and it actually turns out that n is a multiple of three. So that actually works out pretty nicely. So at the very least, we should be able to take whatever input that we are given Suppose the size is six, and we should be able to break it down into multiples of three and split it up into arrays. So is there any other criteria that we have to worry about? There probably is, because we're given a second parameter, a positive integer k. The guarantee about every single one of these subarrays is going to be that the max minus the minimum, or whatever the absolute difference is between the max and the minimum, is going to be less than or equal to k. So that's the guarantee that we have to make. So let me just walk you through my thought process when I solved this problem. First, I asked myself, what's the brute force solution? I kind of do that for every problem. And in this case, the brute force is not even trivial. If you were to kind of approach it with backtracking, it would be pretty difficult because you'd have to create every single possible subarray of size three. As soon as I realized that, I didn't even consider the brute force anymore. Then I started asking, is there any sort of pattern? Is there any sort of shortcut among these elements? It doesn't take long to notice if you even just stare at the output because you quickly notice that the output is sorted. But that's actually not how I solved the problem. I didn't even look at that. I just thought to myself, we have a window of size K. We want for this particular subarray, all those numbers to fall within that window. So the first value that we pick doesn't matter at all. I'm gonna pick the first value as one, just the first element in the array. Okay, now the next values I pick do matter. I want them to be within that window. So I could kind of brute force it in a way by just iterating over every element in the remaining portion of the array and trying to figure out if they're within that window. But then you realize, well, the placement of one matters. Is one gonna be the first element in that window? Is it gonna be the last element? And then you realize, that ideally we want similar elements to be grouped together. How can we do that? Well, by definition, that's sorting. When I say similar elements, I meant elements that are close together in value should be placed close together in their position in the array. And as soon as I realized that, I thought sorting is a possible solution. But still, how do we guarantee that sorting works? Well, think of it this way. Let me introduce you to a way of thinking that you can actually apply to other problems as well. This is called a proof by contradiction. And this is not a formal proof. This is just kind of the thought process that you can use. Suppose I sort the array. We know that this is the solution, but what if it wasn't? What if I actually tried taking these two values and instead of taking the three, I take a bigger value. I actually take four instead because maybe it's possible by not choosing an element here, we can somehow make the rest of the array valid as well. But that's very much not the case. As you can see, if I take this and then I take this and put it in one subarray, and actually to improve the example, let's say I put this in a subarray and then I took these and actually skip an element. I don't go in sorted order. Then the other subarray would look like this and this doesn't work. And the reason is by us choosing an element further to the right, now this subarray has to choose an element even further to the left. So we kind of just expanded both of the arrays. By condensing one array over here, we also condense the other array as well. When I say condense, I mean condense the, the range of values. So all we really have to do is just look at every size K subarray, compare the endpoints, take the difference. We can always take the right element and subtract the left element because we're guaranteed that this is in sorted order. We check that that is less than or equal to K. If it is, we throw it into a subarray. If it's not, we can return an empty array. That's what we're told to do if it's not possible for us to build this result. So by doing it this way, it looks like the solution is big O of n time, but don't forget we actually had to sort the array in the first place. Normally that is big O of n log n. Now let's code it up. So I'm gonna declare, well, I guess first let's just 
just sort the input array before we forget. Let's sort that. Now I'm going to declare the output. It's going to be an empty array initially. We know that's what we want to ultimately return. And then we can start chunking this array into size three subarrays. And for the first time, I'm going to go like this in Python. So we're going to go from the beginning to the end of the array, and we're going to increment by three each time. So in Python, that's what this is doing. It's going from here to here, not including this. This would be out of bounds, and it's going to increment i by three every single time. So now what we check is the end points of the subarray starting at i, and it's going to be of size three. So what we want to do is take i. The right value is going to be at i plus two, and we're going to subtract from it the left, which is i, check if it's less than or equal to k, or actually let's check if it's greater than k. Let's do the opposite, because if it's greater than k, we can then immediately return. And if it's not greater than k, we can then take our actual logic and place it outside of the if statement. I just prefer to generally not nest my code if I don't have to. So that's why I'm doing it like that. Out here, we can create a copy of the subarray going from i to i plus two. In Python, that's pretty easy to do. Start at i, go up until i plus two, but this would actually not include i plus two. So we actually wanna do i plus three. So this is a copy, that's what Python is doing, a deep copy, and we wanna append it to the result like this. And let's go ahead and run this. As you can see on the left, it's hella efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io and I'll see you soon.